welcome back to this last talk in the session all about editors. Uh, once again, we have a speaker who has been a very long time with OSM. You've probably met him, yes, Sverev. Um, he's a very uh, active communicator for OSM. He has uh, Telegram channels uh, for the Russian community, the uh, talk channel and, and blog posts. Uh, he speaks at a lot of conferences and he likes to write editors. So he once wrote the level zero editor, which is really on the lowest level for those people who know their OSM model. And now he's written a new uh, mobile editor called Every Door, and he's going to tell us for who this editor is. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ilya. <laughs> um, I'm here and I am a mapper. And as a mapper, I like to map everything. I strive for 100% of mapping, like I like, like the thing. And there are things that are pretty easy to map, like things we got covered, like streets and buildings, we imprint them and we can draw them, there's machine learning stuff, and things that are harder to map but still important. Like 10 years ago, Steve Cost argued that uh, addresses are important uh, to the point that we don't even need to show buildings without them to make people enter more addresses. He's a bit right, because uh, addresses are still hard to collect, but at the same time, nobody took him seriously because Richard said yesterday that addresses are not like relevant today because we got latitude and longitude. That we uh, and we have more and more open sources for address data we can import. So important, but not very. Thing we are still struggling with in OpenStreetMap are shops and amenities. Like uh, in every city, you see that there are many missing. In this city, I see like near my hotel, nothing is mapped, uh, but there are many mappers in Italy. It just they are quite hard to map to the point that even, even in my city, when I need to find some shop, I open Google Maps because everything is there, not an open street map. And here as well, businesses just take one look at an open street map and they turn to commercial data providers. They get much more data easier to use. And with nobody needing, uh, with nobody having faith in shops and amenities and OpenStreetMap, it's still hard to collect them because nobody is working on it. Just they resign early. Collecting shops and amenities is hard. I once uh, took an entire day walking around my hometown, uh, taking photos of all the shops, and then I spent like four days, morning to evening, typing all the dates into JOSM. After that, my feet hurt, my hands hurt, my head was aching. Never again have I considered even repeating this experience. But still, the problem stays. I strive for 100% in OpenStreetMap. How do we do that? And as a developer, my answer is maybe tools, like we might have better tools that will help us collect it faster and simpler. I tested the theory uh, a year and a half ago uh, when I mapped uh, half a thousand shops over the course of uh, two weeks, a couple hours a day with a Telegram bot. Telegram bot, it doesn't have interactive maps, it doesn't have anything, just to type things and it returns some things. But uh, the advantage that I had is that it didn't prevent me from focusing on shops. It was highly customized, it was like uh, aimed at collecting everything at scale very fast and very thoroughly with photos, with uh, phones with keyboards and stuff like that. I was really satisfied with the experience. Half a thousand shops. 
and I presented it a bit, and people had been asking about OpenStreetMap. Am I planning, well, was I planning to import the data to OpenStreetMap, or why didn't you use it in the first place? Maybe I could write an editor for OpenStreetMap in, as a Telegram bot. No, no, I didn't plan to. It's weird. <laughs> like, you don't do that. <laughs> I had my own data model, I had my own interface that won't work with Telegram. But uh, the thought stayed with me. Really, why not use some of that for OpenStreetMap? And uh, last summer, I did a presentation at State of the Map, sharing some ideas of how they, this could work. What is preventing us from mapping more shops in OpenStreetMap? Like, Interactive maps are <laughs> mostly preventing. I showed some hand-drawn pictures because this is obviously needed to be a mobile app and I knew nothing about mobile development. Uh, and I showed that and I started learning mobile development and learning more. It, it's not as easy as it sounds. And finally, last autumn, I started writing mobile development, mobile editor. And uh, there's this quote by Richard uh, that if I read it then, I would laugh at it because I have written many editors. I have written level zero, revert interface, and lots of stuff. It was easy and fun. You just, uh, there are not many things you need to think about. It's quick. Most people know how to make a new editor. You just write an XML parser and drop it on the map and everything works. Many people have done it. I did it for this one. And uh, quite fast I made like a mock-up of things I showed at the state of the map. It was really fun and making new editors seems simple. Uh, so it displayed data from OpenStreetMap, it, it, it worked. But then I got to like important par parts, like editing attributes. And very quickly, I just started encountering roadblock after roadblock. Like uh, what, what was happening? Like things become harder. Turns out opposite map data model is not the thing you, ever, thing you ever want to work with. Like for simple thing as floors, like you need to know what floor shop is on. And OpenStreetMap has got like three tags with different semantics for that. You had to account for that. Addresses are, the, are a mess. Many mappers insist on having addresses on building contours from uh, address points, not on POIs and fills. So you have to like geocode addresses for POIs if you want to use them. And as a person who has written what I consider the best reverse geocoder for OpenStreetMap, I know how hard it is. I gave several talks on that. Like, it's really not trivial finding an address for any given point. You shouldn't ask people who just use POIs to write reverse geocoders. Uh, and amenities, it's like the thing we have with our oceans. Like, we throw a lot of garbage in the oceans, and now we, we have this big garbage patch in OpenStreetMap Wiki called Amenity Page, uh, which is impossible to sort. I had like two days sorting through these values uh, for POIs and micromapping stuff. Like there are benches, there are hospitals, there are uh, pharmacies, all different stuff in one tag. I think what broke me was uh, payment tags. Because in my Telegram bot, I had just the switch. Does the shop accept cards? Yes or no? In OpenStreetMap, there is an option for no, but there is no option for yes. You have instead to list all the accepted payment providers. And if a country gets new payment provider, like Russia five years ago, then you have to update all the hundreds of thousands of shops to include that payment for provider as well. And I wrote a frustrated post in my blog I wrote some bitter posts to OSMED Telegram group, and I really understood Richard's quote. 
Like you don't write auto map answers because it's very hard, it's very frustrating. Uh, you don't. I was very depressed. <laughs> I just thought of dropping it, like roadblock after roadblock. Yeah, it was a hard time. So to to get out of that loop, I had to distract myself. What else could you do? And the thing is, this is all open source. Or our pro project, OpenStreetMap is open source. I decided to port some libraries that might could have helped me. And I did exactly that. Uh, so the thing is, is in OpenStreetMap, there are a lot of people who already have done editors, and they uh, published it over source code and things, you can use it. And especially I must mention the ID editor ecosystem. I'm like forever grateful for to Brian, to Quincy, to Martin, uh, who create have created and still support all the things that uh, tagging presets, name suggestion index, editor layer index, country coder with the help of Vladimir Gaponkin. Uh, OSM Auth Library, lots of stuff still supported by them and by community, translated into multiple languages. I ported them to Dart language, included them into my editor, and suddenly I uh, had satellite imagery layers, including local ones. I could type words in my language, like Balnitsa, hospital, and get all the tags for hospitals and all the fields that needs to be filled it started to feel like a proper editor. It felt like magic, thanks to the ID editor ecosystem. I felt that I was close. There were just a couple of things left to improve, like uploading data to opposite my server, uh, accounting for conflicts and stuff. But generally, I was on the final stretch. And I showed things I, Ported it to, uh, pointed it to sandbox, tested a few months more, and finally I switched it to OpenStreetMap server and st collected like <laughs> emails of 40 people who agreed to help me with testing, and testing started. And with that, the whole mode of development has switched instead of just abstract coding trying to get it out, I started mapping. I went out and uh, was just mapping everything. Uh, went out to my convenience store and edited on the map. And I returned and fixed some things that could be done better, could be more optimized. And then I went to my local shopping mall, which is the second biggest one in Estonia, and mapped all the 150 uh, shops uh, over two and a half hours, shop a minute, which might sound a lot, but that's not just name and type and open hours like we're used to. It's also all the addresses, all the floors, uh, operator name, wheelchair accessibility, payment types for every of 150 shops, shop a minute. And it's immediately an open seat map. I didn't have to do any homework. That felt like groundbreaking. Of course, I returned home and improved things a bit as well. So it was constantly improving. 100% seemed achievable. Like, how many of you know that uh, in a kilometer around your house, there is obsolete or unmapped uh, shops or amenities? I know there aren't around me because I spent a couple of days walking around all my district and collecting and updating every shop and amenity as well. Now I use OpenStreetMap to find stuff. And uh, I, I even uh, had a, an idea how to improve uh, open hours editor, which is a pain point for many, many editors. Now with just five taps, you can enter open hours for anything, working hours, uh, working days, holidays, very fast. I was so proud of that. 
And when I walk to shops, I passed parks with benches and street lamps. And I thought, micro mapping must be fun. <laughs> like maybe I could add all of that to open street map. So I did uh, I planned micro mapping mode like from the start because why not? And uh, I made a draft and I went uh, for a couple of hours outside my home and in that couple of hours I mapped everything, playground equipment, benches, uh, waste baskets, recycling bins, street lamps, manholes, traffic calming stuff, uh, everything. And I found that micro mapping is fun. Like I didn't think that. Usually micro mapping is uh, corresponds with regret that you usually micro map a part of the map and then you never return them uh, because it's not manageable. But with this editor, it is great. And with just a couple taps for anything, you just tap at a bench, tap, uh, make a backrest material. It was fun. And then uh, what, well, there are things that people just like to map the most. For many, it's railways. Everybody loves mapping railways, I think. Uh, for me, also, it's uh, entrance of these apartment numbers. Uh, because in uh, Russia, in Estonia, and many West, uh, Eastern and European countries, a uh, lot of apartment numbers. I like numbers. They make us collect them all. Uh, so I added a third mode to editor <laughs> where I collected all the entrances in my area and even ventured to the different district. Uh, it was really simple. And also there's address editor with uh, building editor with addresses, with building types and so on. The editor was progressing. It was really fun to just go out because every time I went out uh, of my house, I met something. And uh, I also improved the editor. I just every time I got back, I found something to improve. And it uh, was uh, exciting. I thought of an uh, idea for a force mapping mode. I think you're starting to see something wrong there. Like, I didn't notice that uh, bug reports uh, seeded from testers, that uh, it looked like stable. I was still eager to improve stuff. Like, and uh, it's like uh, there was a depressing state of development, and now there's this manic stage of this bipolar development. <laughs> this needed to stop because I didn't know that, but I started to burn out. And the best way to stop is to just set a finish line. There you have to have a break. And of course, uh, I set it for state of the map. Uh, I decided to publish it before the state of the map. And well, I did. This Monday is the official release of the first version of every door editor for iOS and Android. Um, <laughs> and this week marks uh, the week OpenStreetMap mapping changes. Like it's no more tracing stuff at home. It just, again, like 10 years ago, it's going out and mapping. Uh, now we will have not only roads and buildings, but I'm pretty sure that in five years we will have points of interest database that will rival the commercial databases because it's simple and the editor makes you want to go out and map. It's not like 10 years ago. And uh, it helps me strive for 100%. Like, you know, this feeling of regret when you're cycling somewhere or in a new city and you have some time and as a mapper you want to map stuff but and you start mapping small things like uh, bus stops and, but absence of good tools of time of uh, you know everything just makes you map some things like the street complete but not everything and you leave that place knowing that You'll never be there, and there are still things unmapped, and you know the, what these things are, but you cannot map them. 
now you can make it 200% with every door editor. Like right now, you're in a very beautiful city of Italy, uh, Florence, with lots of uh, shops and maps, with lots of uh, benches, not on the map. Most of you will never return there again. But now you can install every door, get out of the building and map everything. And when you come home, you will know that you did everything you could and you improved the map of Florence. So people who will be here next will use your work. And you should do it. Like this is new era of OpenStreetMap where we all come out and finally map things. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ilya, um, for this interesting talk. So no excuse for you on the way to your social event tonight, map a couple of shops. Um, so I start with a question from the online audience, the obvious one. Is the app on Android? No, of course not. <laughs> but, but I plan to. Publishing on Android is not simple, but uh, there is a ticket on GitHub. It's like the most active ticket and uh, by the second version it will be published on Android. Okay, that's good to know. So let's start with some questions from the audience. Hi, Ilya. I have a question which is uh, similar to the question about uh, tagging schema in ID. Is it customizable and it is possible to change the URL of API? Because we used um, the OSM software infrastructure for uh, industrial mapping, for, for mapping utilities, which it's not appropriate for OpenStreetMap. It, it is customizable for such cases. Thank you. Uh, is it customizable? Well, not in the editor itself yet, I guess, but the editor is open source. You need just uh, three lines uh, to compile it and set it up, and you can inside you can change anything from URLs to presets to anything you want. Uh, hi, I wanted to ask if your tool uh, uses name suggestion index for the for the chains and canonical brand. Uh, yes, it does use a name suggestion index. Uh, I mentioned it uh, from uh, it's a great like uh, data source from uh, authors of ID editor. And yes, it, it's really when you type uh, McDonald's in the search box, it will have all the tags you need for McDonald's. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one more question online. So people got stuck with the payment types. Uh, do you think there should be a default value or you have something like uh, if I'm in this country, uh, these are the defaults you can set? Yeah, our, our tagging model, as Richard and Sarah <laughs> have shown, needs a lot of improvement, not only in payments, but in that as well. <laughs> okay. uh, so, uh, hi. So one of the questions that OpenStreetMap, the organization, gets asked by new people quite often is, what is the OpenStreetMap mobile app? Do you think uh, this app could become the official OpenStreetMap editor or mobile app? I, I don't think that opposite map doesn't have it shouldn't have anything official like it doesn't have an official desktop editor it just have popular ones i really expect every door to be like the second popular editor in open street map <laughs> by number of users if if you all install it maybe a bit closer to it uh, but in no way it's official because it edits only poi and some actual mapping stuff not roads not buildings and I don't think it's possible to make an all-encompassing app that's also easy to use. We need more of that. Like, uh, Everydoor shouldn't be the only app for mobile editing. There should be different apps with Vespucci, Street Complete for different people for different modes of mapping. 
and deeming one of them as official will hurt others. So we shouldn't do that. Have you tried it with speech access technology? Because it looks like it's probably closer than any of the others to letting blind people map features of interest to them. Uh, as I got the question was about speech, using speech for mapping, right? Um, screen readers, um, oh. which I know the Apple phones have right. uh, for, uh, for blind people. Yeah, for screen readers. Yes, this app is fully accessible. And since, uh, at least for POI mapping, it doesn't use the map as a central interface, uh, it is possible to use screen readers and map uh, without uh, using visual cues from uh, the screen. Just means excellent. Thank you. So not using interactive maps really helps make your app more accessible. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Then thank you again, Ilya. <laughs> Thanks.